Spent several months debating whether I wanted to buy the 2022 model of this laptop right here, but I kept saying to myself, maybe I should wait for the refresh to come out and here's the refresh here. This is kind of something of like a white whale for me. So this one here is the Lenovo Slim Pro 7 uh, for 2023. I think internationally it's also known as the Yoga as well, um, but in here in Canada and US it's called the uh, Lenovo Slim Pro 7. This is the 2023 refresh. The 14 inch model here, it's gonna be something like a, something like a MacBook. So if you look at it here, it's quite thin, kind of MacBook style design, all metal chassis. So it definitely has the MacBook kind of vibe to it. It's a little bit heavier than you might think. It's actually 3.5 pounds. That's certainly not heavy by any means. It has a glass touchscreen, of course. It's all metal build. You also get dedicated graphics in here. So of course they have to add some extra copper to cool that, which does add to the weight a little bit. Last year's model came with the 6800H from AMD for the processor and a RTX 3050 four gigabyte GPU. This year it is refreshed. It does have the same CPU. So they call it now the 7735HS, which is a 6800H. It's just rebranded from AMD. You know how confusing that is. 7735HS. The Arturix graphics for 2022 were just four gigabytes. It was a 3050, which for you know studio-based work should be fine. However, this year, this year's model has the full refresh for 2023, which has the six gigabyte 3050. I've already reviewed a six gigabyte 3050 in the Lenovo LOQ that I just bought that myself and reviewed it. And that extra two gigabytes of VRAM comes in very handy when it comes to games. So having that extra two gigabytes of VRAM on this model here does make it also a viable gaming machine too. This model here is not specifically targeted at gamers, although it obviously can game. It's got this RTX Studio drivers. So it's more of like a hybrid device or more of a professional type device. Personally, I love hybrid devices that, you know, are super sleek, unassuming, kind of like a professional, almost MacBook type vibe. You take it to a meeting and then when you're done, you go to a coffee shop or whatever and you fire up your favorite game and you can actually play with good settings as well. Beyond that studio tag there, there are some other hints that really make this obvious that it's a studio or you know content creator type laptop. This is a 14.5 inch screen. Um, it may seem a little smaller because it has such tiny bezels. There are two screen offerings. This is the 2K screen, which is 1600p, um, equivalent to 1440p, but you have a slightly higher aspect ratio than a 16 by nine, you get 16 by 10. So it's 1600p on this screen here. They also offer a 3K version of this. The 2K model right here has 350 nits. The 3K model has 400 nits. So they're both pretty bright, to be honest. For people who like touchscreen based devices, uh, it's a touchscreen. It's a very responsive touchscreen as well, glass. This one has 100% sRGB. The 3K model of this has 100% DCI-P. So slightly better colors, but both of them are gonna be excellent for content creation and for professional work. Uh, the I integrated graphics are more than capable. 680M graphics from AMD are gonna be more than enough to do day-to-day -day tasks, even gaming on them technically. And the 7735HS is also very efficient. So you should get really good battery life out of this laptop. Now, one thing to note as well, it does have a 3050 and a 7735 HS in here. It's not gonna be the most powerful variant of those chips. Again, this is, only supports 140 watts over USB-C, which is pretty impressive, but it's also a very thin chassis. So they're not gonna slap in the largest, highest wattage variants of them. The Lenovo LOQ that I reviewed recently has a 3050 six gigabyte refresh, but that one can go up to 95 watts. This one here only boosts up to, well, it says 75, but I think it's around 65 on standard use. So there is a bit of a difference there, you know, going from 65 or 75 up to 95 watts. So in this room, this is gonna be my standard review. I'm gonna do a full tear down of this laptop. I'm gonna look at the keyboard, screen, everything. I'm gonna open up the bottom, look at all the upgrades inside. I'm gonna give you all my impressions on day-to-day -day use. I'm gonna do video editing and benchmarking, all that kind of stuff. But I'm not just gonna have one video. So if you are interested in seeing follow-ups on this laptop, do consider subscribing and maybe hitting the bell icon for some follow-up information on it. I will be doing a full gaming video on this where I do throw a ton of really demanding in 2023 AAA titles at the device and see how it performs in gaming titles. So 140 watt GAN, nice and slim. Um, bring in an iPhone for context. iPhone 8 Plus, smaller than that. And here's the laptop. Nice sleek presentation. And here it is, the Lenovo Slim Pro 7. I wanted to review this last year, the 2022 model. I wanted to buy it for myself and I just never got around to it. I kept almost buying it and then I ended up getting legions and went with that route. These laptops are, from what I've seen, awesome. So I'm super happy they sent it over. It's a very, very thin laptop. It's not gonna show up on camera because it never does, but let's zoom out here. Very, very thin, like finger thick, super, super thin laptop on the front. Doesn't get much bigger on the back either. There's a little bit of a butt here. A um, little bit of like a ledge there. It is not a thick laptop. This is like MacBook Pro thickness. All metal chassis, metal top, metal bottom. So it's not the lightest laptop in the world, not by any means, for two reasons. One, it's all metal. For two, there's a lot inside of this laptop. The specs of this machine are quite impressive to be honest. So it would be more in line of the weight of a MacBook Pro than a MacBook Air. They're around three pounds, depending on how you spec them out, they're around three pounds. Speaker grills there, so nice, beautiful metal, 
design here. Um, I'm not being biased. You're gonna hear me probably praise this a lot it's because I really like these laptops a lot. Let's open it up. So I'm the first reviewer, I believe, to get this one. So it's uh, you know pristine, there's no fingerprints on it. And there you go, beautiful inside laptop, hyper reflective screen, you can see me in there. Let's turn it so you don't have to stare at my face the whole time. Um, all metal inside here, nice dark, not quite gunmetal, kind of gunmetal, like a nice dark color, won't show fingerprints. Um, keyboard is the same color, again, won't show fingerprints, not black. Big audio right here, I'm assuming these are gonna be audio. Audio on the top, audio on the bottom, I'm assuming, so that's really nice. But let's have a look at the ports here. Uh, USB-C, USB-C, uh, that says charging. I'm pretty sure you can use both, but uh, you'll know, have power delivery on this one here. So if you're gonna be powering out to a monitor or something, that's the way to go. HDMI right there, I'll put this back on the screen. Um, this is a very new laptop to me. So we'll put this back on the screen there, HDMI, nothing on the back, obviously. And then on the flip side, you get a legacy port, USB-A, headphone microphone combo jack, power, and camera kill switch. But you also get an HDMI. Kind of crazy, to be honest. Like, this laptop is tiny. I think they put the HDMI because it has dedicated uh, RTX graphics. So, you know, if you're, if you're putting out to a display, typically you're gonna wanna use the HDMI. You can use these, but typically you'll wanna use the HDMI. So immediately I can see it's a nice, beautiful screen, very bright, excellent colors. I can tell right off the bat, again, I'll put the specs up, but, uh, but this is kind of a creator style laptop. It's not just for gaming. I mean, you can game on it, absolutely. But technically it's more of like a professional slash creator laptop. It's got these studio drivers, RTX studio drivers. So, you know, it's going to be superb for doing, you know, video editing, that kind of stuff, whatever your professional workflow is. However, you can also game on it. You can absolutely game on it. So you get both. But as a result, the screen has, you know, really, really good colors. Okay, so we're into the Vantage here. I mean, Vantage, I show it in all my videos. There's things you can do, rapid charge. Uh, if you're leaving your laptop plugged in all the time, you can go conservation mode. Then you're going to get 75 to 80%. It'll charge up to that. You won't fully charge your battery all the time if it's plugged in all the time. And uh, in theory, having your battery sit at 75 to 80% all the time is going to help the life of the battery um, be prolonged over just leaving it at 100% charged all the time. Oh, there's a thing here called performance boost. I've never seen this before. It's probably suspend uh, apps and things like that. So, you know, if you're gaming, it'll suspend other apps. If you're doing, you know, Photoshop and that, it'll suspend other apps. So that'll be kind of cool. Um, yeah, looks like you get three, you know, performance modes, just like the Legion laptop, same idea, performance, intelligent cooling, battery saver. This is balanced. It actually has GPU overclocking. A lot of the laptops from previous years didn't have this. And all of a sudden in 2023, all of their laptops have overclocking, which is incredible. So this is their base, I guess. You can add 20 megahertz to the GPU clock, which will make a difference on a 3050, absolutely. And more importantly, you can overclock the VRAM. You can disable your dedicated graphics and just run on the iGPU with this laptop. So for me, I would just crank this and then leave it because if you don't use your dedicated graphics, it'll just be disabled anyways. So pretty quiet. We're doing a lot of updates here. Try to lift that. I'm trying to like push the sound into the microphone here. So this is gonna be one of the most demanding like day-to-day -day tasks, doing updating that it will really get the fans going. We'll do the audio test here. Uh, the mic's right here, you can see it facing right at the screen. Uh, so we should get some pretty loud noise. We should get some pretty good recordings here. I'm gonna start a little quieter. I'm assuming this is gonna get pretty loud. So check your headphones and we'll test it out. Okay, I'm gonna turn it up. So that's 70, we'll go up higher. Pretty loud. I'm turned down if it's kind of loud. Okay, so the audio is very, very clear and extremely loud. Um, the mid bass all the way up to the very high range is um, superb, extremely clean. Um, I really, really like the audio on it. The extremely low end bass is, you can hear it, but it's not super present. But I would say the audio for the thinness of this device is quite nice, actually. It's really loud, quite clear, and uh, it sounds very crisp, too. So we'll listen to how it sounds when uh, Nvidia's speaking. You know, in that time period, they have to go home and do more work on their off time. I don't have to do homework for my job, and I get paid to do that. Sorry, I uh, something just really hit a nerve there. Educational games have been a thing as long as video games themselves have been a thing. From Math Grand Prix to Mario is Missing. Again, this is a creator laptop, so the colors are quite superb. You know, it's not an OLED, so you're not gonna have absolute blacks. The blacks are really nice. Uh, really, really nice, actually. 
I do a lot of cartography based work, so I work with colors a lot, and I obviously test a lot of laptops. This is a very, very nice screen. The colors are quite crisp, they're accurate. Now comes the fun part for me. I'm gonna open up the laptop. Yep, that felt pretty good actually. I'm just nervous because it's not my laptop. I don't wanna break it. Uh, no issues getting inside. That was actually quite easy to take off. Metal, you can see there. Um, you know, there's some like brackets and that. There's a thermal pad there that sits on the SSD. So that'll keep it a little bit cooler. And because this is metal, it's gonna basically spread the heat right into there. So that's a very effective NVMe passive cooling solution there, which is great. Quite easy to get into. Um, again, I was a little nervous because it's not my laptop, so. Okay, so here's a look at the inside. Uh, I'm not gonna dig too deep, but we have those nice big speakers, down firing speakers there. So that's why it sounds so good. You get pretty good bass. Huge battery on the 71.5 watt hours. That is a huge battery on a 14 inch, like super thin Ultrabook. Man, that's like the size you get on like gaming laptops. So this thing in theory should have crazy good battery life. We'll have that later, but that's quite nice. So gigantic battery, good speakers, already looking good. Uh, Wi-Fi, obviously you can upgrade it if you want. It comes with Wi-Fi 6, so you'll be fine for now. But years down the road, I mean, Wi-Fi 7 is coming out. I guess you could upgrade to that, whatever. NVMe, fully replaceable, full size 2280. Take it out, put a new one in. We'll see what it comes with, but it's good. Dual fan set up here. They look like they're the same size. Dual heat pipe into both. Um, I'm not going to you know pull this off, but there's GPU and CPU, whichever one's there. So good cooling solution here. They're not, either of them are super hot, CPU or GPU. So this should be more than enough to cool it. You know, nice dense fan fins there. So you're gonna have nice cooling out of that. Uh, you have some VRMs under here. So that's gonna also share some of the cooling as well. So should be nice and cool. There's another VRM cooler there. So looks pretty good inside. You don't have a ton of upgradability, you know, Wi-Fi, NVMe, that's pretty much it. RAM soldered. So, you know, if you get 16 gigabytes, you got 16 gigabytes. We're gonna do a typing test now. Uh, I'll just get the mic set up so you can hear it as well. And uh, it looks more like a Legion keyboard, to be honest, than it does like an IdeaPad. If you've had an IdeaPad, they share a lot of similarities, but the IdeaPad typically is a smaller keycap, like quite literally the keycap itself, and the travel is smaller. Uh, I have my Legion 7 Gen 8 over here. This looks like my Legion 7 Gen 7 AMD. The color looks the same, the keycaps look the same, and the, it looks to be like my Legion 7 Gen 7, which is a really nice keyboard. So let's give this a typing test here. Uh, just get it set up and we'll type something out. Um, for a thin and light laptop, I'm gonna say this right now, for a thin and light laptop, this is the best keyboard I've ever typed on in my entire life. Objectively, no question. MacBook, this kills it. Right away, let's bring one of the bigger ones down here and we'll see how quick it, uh, the audio comes up. Two minute clip. Boom, done. Um, let's bring this one in here, this is a big one. Let's see how quick this one goes. Not bad, oh, there you go, boom, pretty fast. And here we go. It's gonna come in at two minutes and 30 seconds. That is incredibly fast. I don't necessarily know how the studio drivers work. I mean, this is just a 3050, but that's really fast. That's like, that's incredibly fast. Uh, you can see here, it's a pretty dark room. I did this intentionally, so there's not a lot of light behind me. Uh, there's a little bit of light coming in from the front, nothing crazy, it's nighttime right now. Um, so I wanna give it more of a challenging scene. Um, but it looks to be doing quite well. Um, light coming from the left, like nothing on the right, just so they're reflecting off the wall here. And it seems to be dealing with it pretty well. Bright and not a lot of light in front anymore. Um, and it's able to separate out my face from the light behind. Um, so it's a actually pretty good contrast, despite the fact that there's a light right behind me. You can see there, still able to pick up my face. So. And it says here we're getting eight hours and seven minutes at uh, 83%. And I'm just doing some pretty basic stuff like watching YouTube and that. Um, it's on, you know, power efficiency. I'm not, you know, it's not on battery saver. The screen is pretty much over around 60% or so. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be an all day laptop, absolutely. You're gonna get between probably eight to 10 hours depending on what you're doing. And here's another look at the battery here. We're not actually on battery save or anything like that, but this is kind of just like idle. I'm just basically typing. And you know, we're getting like 12 hours. So. And here's a look at the Cinebench R23 scores. It looks like we're getting 1408 on single core, a little over 10,000 on multi-core. So very respectable and so very respectable performance. Uh, you have to also consider that this is a very few, 
You also have to consider that this is a very efficient chip as well, so it's not going to have the raw power of something like you know a 13900H or something like that, uh, but it does have very respectable scores despite the fact that it's quite low power. And here's another synthetic benchmark here. So we're getting 4,700 of the graphics score. That's actually very respectable for such a low power 3050 and a, you know, a super thin laptop. Um, so clearly you're gonna be able to game with this. And the CPU score is also very respectable as well, just over 9,000 on a uh, very low wattage Ultrabook style CPU. So this is actually really good results here. Here's a look at the SSD that ships with. It's actually a very fast SK Hynix drive. You know, it looks like we're getting 7,000 reads here and writes around 3,400. So this is gonna be very quick for things like video editing. Obviously games, it's gonna be massive overkill for gaming. Here's a screen capture of some thermals that I took when I was running the Time Spy test. And you can see here that for the Nvidia graphics, we're only hitting 74 in the hotspot temperature and 67 there. Uh, is the overall temperature. So, I mean, very respectable. I mean, a peak of basically 74 degrees. It's obvious that the cooling solution on this, it's obvious that this cooling solution on this laptop is well designed for the power that it has. And here's a look at some gaming results. I'm going to have a full dedicated video where I actually show uh, 9 to 10 games being played, and I'll show you all the different settings, and you can see the gameplay footage. But you can see here very respectable results here. Witcher 3 600p medium native. Uh, we're getting an average of 63 with lows of 29, so that's very good. Uh, Red Dead Redemption, same kind of story. You're going to see this in most games. I mean, we're getting around 60 in a lot of games here. The lows are very respectable. I mean, around 30 or above in a lot of these games. But this is going to be probably good for 1600p medium gaming in a lot of cases, and you can obviously throw in some DLSS here and there. You can see here that in Forza Horizon 5, that extra VRAM comes in super handy because we're able to play 1600p on high settings, and we're still getting 83 average, and the 0.1% low is at 54, so that's very good because Forza Horizon 5 is a super demanding title for VRAM. So you can see here that that extra two gigabytes on the 2023 refresh of the 3050 is coming in handy. You can see in even very demanding games like Star Wars Jedi Survivor, we're at 1200p uh, with medium, but we do have quality FSR there, and it makes a huge difference. You can see when we go from native medium 1200p up to quality FSR medium, you know, it jumps up quite a bit. We're getting 23 is the 0.1% lows and averages of 63, so very, very playable even in such a demanding game. And then if we look at another couple of more demanding titles here, Last of Us actually played surprisingly well. 600p high with just quality DLSS, and we were getting you know 40 FPS, which is like a quality mode. And then on medium, with performance DLSS, we were getting 47 as the 0.1% lows, and 52 as the average, so very respectable performance there. The only game that I tested that really didn't run well was Hogwarts Legacy. This is run in Hogsmeade, which is kind of the killer area, and you can see here the lows are pretty bad, to be honest. Um, however, if you're willing to play with the settings a little bit, you can put it at 1200p, and throw it on a medium low mix and throw on some DLSS and you then you can get very playable performance even in the most demanding parts of the game so uh, obviously you can see that this is a very capable laptop for gaming despite the fact that it's a thin ultrabook designed at portability and studio style and and video editing and professional type work you can do some serious gaming on this laptop so my takeaway of the 2023 refresh of the Slim Pro 7 with the 3050 2023 refresh, six gigabyte, it's an absolute winner in my books. Amazing keyboard, amazing trackpad, all metal design inst instills confidence, good speakers to be honest, beautiful screen. You can see me reflected right in it. Nice touchscreen, glossy. Um, you know, if you don't like glossy touchscreens, then that won't be your thing, but I think it looks quite nice. It's very, very, very vivid, beautiful colors. The nice thing is as well, for people who are gonna be looking at this type of laptop hybrid users, you get those studio graphics here, uh, which they did prove to actually be very effective when it comes to video editing. Um, but even in gaming, uh, even in gaming as well, despite the low wattage of the CPU and the GPU, you actually get really good gaming performance as well out of that combination. So very happy with the performance of the laptop, but I think more than just the performance of the laptop, because I mean, you can just buy a gaming laptop, is the fact that it's so slim, has the design elements that would rival something like a MacBook, macbook pro beautiful beautiful screen amazing keyboard uh, lots of key travel on that amazing trackpad and really it's nice and quiet amazing battery life and really there's no compromises on this laptop so we'll see how much lenovo launches this for in terms of pricing um, i don't have a price right now because i haven't you know have it in canada at least or in the u.s but i think it's an absolute winner um you know like i said before i almost bought one of these from 2022 and i think i made the right decision to hold off for this year's model uh, i might end up picking one of these up after i'm done with this review 
because I do like that 3050 refresh. Having that extra two gigabytes of VRAM is perfect for someone like me who's a hybrid user who will use this for gaming on the go. But then also, you know, when I sit down, I could use those RTX graphics for video editing. I think Lenovo has an absolute winner on their hands here. I was interested in this last year and with the upgrades that they've done this year to like the keyboard and some other things here and there, the GPU and some of the internals, I think it's an absolute winner.